Hi there. This is Pastor Robert May here at Holiness House of Prayer. We'd like to invite you and your family out to a family-friendly environment, a church where everyone is welcome. It's a place where you can come and hear the true Word of God, where we believe in the fullness of the gospel with the power of the baptism of the Holy Ghost that also comes with an experience of a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. A place where you can come and find refuge and help for our weary souls. We are a church that wants to help our community and give back and bless them and show them the love of Christ that He also hath showed unto us. Friend, we'd love to have you out with us anytime. Our services are Thursdays at 7. We have Sunday school at 5. Service and worship starts at 6. We'd love to have you come out and be with us and experience the relationship with Christ like it should be in its pure raw form of nothing but untamed true love and pure worship for the Lord. Friend, I'd like to say I love you. We would love to have you come out and be a part of our church anytime. May God richly bless you is our prayer. Amen. This world will promise peace and safety, but there cometh sudden destruction. Amen. But we know the help that we have only comes from the Lord. Amen. There's no help in a bottle or a pill. There's no help. Amen. In this garbage music, or there's no help. Amen. In a therapist or a counselor. Amen. But the Bible said the government shall be upon his shoulder. They shall call him wonderful counselor, prince of peace, everlasting father. Amen. And tonight, whatever we need, we must trust. Amen. That we can go to the well. Amen. And we can get a drink of water. Amen. And it will sustain us. For he said, Whosoever will, let them come and take of the water of life freely. And in you shall spring up wells of living water. Amen. This he spake of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, Amen. We'll get our mind on the Lord. We can just have church. Amen. Who wants to have church tonight? Amen. I don't want to. Amen. I don't want a form of a routine. Amen. I want to have church. I want God to be in the midst, in control. Amen. And just have His way. Amen. So tonight, Lord wants to shout you till your bobby pins fall out. Listen, Connie, let Him shout you, honey. Amen. Oh, yes. Come on, Moses. He'll bobby pins on her back. Amen. We just let it fly tonight. I'm a firm believer in old time Holy Ghost power. Amen. I mean, the Bible said Ezekiel, when he came into the presence of the Lord, fell as if he were dead. Amen. How much do we see the presence of God in the house anymore? Or will we see somebody fall as if they were dead? Amen. Just like John the Revelator, in the presence of God, he fell as if he were dead. When the last time that God slayed you out in the spirit, amen, and you fell as if you were dead because the presence of God was so strong, amen, tonight, how do you get that presence, amen, when you get in one mind and one accord, amen, like they get in the upper room, Holy listen, people want to have an encounter with an experience with Christ, but we must tarry and seek the Lord like they did, and then the Spirit will come in as a sound of a rushing mighty wind. And the Bible said, clothed in tongues, tell upon them all. I'm telling you, amen. When that Holy Ghost sold up, he'll do something. There'll be a language, amen. Probably like any other, not like any other language, but you'll hear, a, amen, a Holy Ghost a language that'll speak, amen. Honey, don't refrain it. Amen. But let it go. Let that flow. Amen. Let it flow out of you. Because the Bible said this. Amen. That when we speak in an unknown tongue, it edifies ourselves. Some of us need to be built up, Lord. Some of us. Amen. We need the Lord 
religious. I don't know about you, but that devil tries to keep knocking us down. But it will get our mind on the Lord tonight and let the Holy Ghost have his way. I'm telling you, friend, we'll experience the power of Pentecost in this house. But we got to get our mind on heaven. He said to seek those things which are above. Amen. For the things that are beneath. Amen. Are earthly. Amen. And the things that are above are heavenly. He said to seek it out for first the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And listen, when we seek him, amen, his power will be evident. Amen. His glory will fall. Amen. Moses said in the 33rd chapter of the book of Ezekiel, uh, the book of Exodus, he said, Lord, show me your glory. I want to see the glory of God like Moses seen it as a cloud that followed them and covered them in the day and a pillar of fire. Oh, I'm telling you, a pillar of Children better get ready. Amen. We better seek the Lord and give as much of God as we can. Because I'm telling you, the God warned me. Amen. Last Saturday, it came to me. It told me it's time to get ready. Amen. And I'm telling you, church, I've prayed and I've sought God all week. Amen. I told him into the church the other day. Amen. That whenever I woke up, God took me straight to Ephesians 6. How that we must put on the whole armor of God to the window. Amen. We must get ready for warfare because the devil is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And we must get ready. Time to quit tiptoeing around it. Time to quit, amen, dilly dabbling in things we ought not to. But it's time to get the real fire. It's time to get the real move of God. Get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Steer up inside of you. Amen. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy to stir up the gift that which is in thee by the laying on of hands. Amen. Honey, listen tonight. Amen. If you need stirred up tonight, amen. We need to get in a prayer line and get the Holy Ghost fire to roll it inside of us. Because I'm telling you tonight, amen. You heed the warning. The enemy's coming. And if you're not prayed up, if you're not on fire, if you're not built up on your most holy faith, you will fall and will perish without the burning fire of the Holy Ghost in you. See tonight, amen. And I'm not going to preach, but glory to God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, we need to get ourselves, amen, on fire. Amen. We need to get ourselves burning because our God is a consuming fire. Amen. We need to allow Him to consume us. No more will we let the things of the world consume our mind, consume our thoughts, or our heart. But we need to let the fire of God consume us. That tonight we must seek the Lord and have a renewing, a restoring, a refreshing. Oh, listen tonight. And the only way that we're going to get it is to seek the face and the hand of God. Woo! I'm telling you tonight. Amen. It's the fire of God that will keep you going. Amen. It's the fire of that Holy Ghost that keeps you going. Jeremiah felt like throwing in the towel. Jeremiah felt like quitting. He didn't think nobody would listen to him anymore. And listen, he felt like giving up. But he said, thy word was in me like a fire. Shut up in my world. It's that Holy Ghost fire that'll keep you thriving. That Holy Ghost fire that'll keep you burning. That Holy Ghost fire that'll keep you moving. And pressing and pushing and going farther and farther and farther with you. Because tonight the devil wants to put your flame out. But tonight we proclaim the Lord is going to set the house on fire. Woo! Oh, 
and said, Lord, take and use me. Set me on fire tonight, God. Set me on fire tonight, oh God. Set me on fire tonight, Lord. Lord, I want to be on fire again. I want my fire back. I want my desire back. I want the renewal back. I want the healing back. I want what is mine. I'm sick of the death. We need the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Wherever you look, honey, I'm going to tell you the importance of fire in the church. Ah, when they was there in the upper room and they tarried 10 days and the Holy Ghost fell right after that. Honey, they began to speak in tongues and cloven in tongue fell upon them all. And there was men of every nation and every creed and of every race that hear them. And they said, all these men are filled with new wine. And Peter rose up among them and said, these men are not drunk as he supposed. See, it is but but burnt out of the day. All oh, but this, that which was spoken of the prophet Joel, that in the last day, said God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters. Amen. 
that when the fire fell, there was a ditch that was dug around it. Amen. And he gathered stones and he repaired the altar. But when it fell, the Bible said that it consumed the sacrifice. The Bible said it burned up the stones. Not only did it do that, but it lapped up the water. Oh, I'm telling you tonight, amen, he'll remove everything that's there. And the only thing that'll be left is the fire from God. Tonight, God wants to set you on fire. Let me agree tonight, amen, that you need a little more than fire. I need a little more than fire. Amen. But see, some of us are smothering it out. Oh, have you ever seen somebody that built a fire and instead of throwing that all on there and having a big old fire blazing, they want to hold some of it back? Anybody ever burnt garbage? Ah, just throw one bag on there, and when it burns up, then I'll throw another. Some of us is holding back a little bit. We'll come into service, and we'll throw a little in, amen, on the fire, and we'll burn a little up, amen. But what God's saying is throw it all on there, amen. Because when you throw it all on there, you get rid of all the garbage, and you get completely set apart, a burn, and a blaze like never seen before. Have you ever seen the fire? How big it is that you throw it all on there? Woo, they can see it for miles. Oh, I'm sick of a little bitty fire that nobody can see. I want a fire that everybody can see. I want one, amen, that will light up, amen, everywhere I'm at. Honey, like an old song said, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Honey, I want to let it shine. That when I get around the world, that all oh, this and they get set on fire too. Amen. Amen. You know somebody gets set on fire by your fire. Come on now. You ever been in a dying old bread up? A you ever been in an old dead dried up service? Amen. But somebody got the fire get up. Woo! Well, let's set the house on fire. Some of you need to be fire starters. Oh, come on now. Come on. Amen. We need to be bar starters. I remember I used to work in forestry. And when I worked in forestry, they would do a thing called back setting. Amen. And they had a, a special tool. It was a fire starter. That's what it done. Amen. And it had a little bit of diesel fuel and kerosene in it that used either one. And it had a flame on the end of it. And that flame on the end of it, they tilted it up. And it, it would pour a stream of fire. And they would go through and they would set that fire. I'm telling you tonight, some of us, amen, that's got the fire, need to get out of our seat and get a hold of somebody that needs to set a fire and shake the arm to let the record that the fiber of the Because tonight, God wants you set on the fire. Now tonight, you're going to ask yourself this question. And I'm going to come to an end. I ain't preaching tonight. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but see, you got to ask yourself, am I on fire? That's right. Or has the storms of this life with the rain of all the calamity and the tragedy and the desires. Listen, not only the rain of, of, of destruction, but there is a rain of lustful desires that will put your fire out. There is a rain, amen, honey, of lustfulness, amen, because your flesh, your flesh wants to lust for the things of the world, amen. And when that rain comes, amen, it'll put the fire out too, amen. But he said, covet, honey, listen, not the things of this world, amen. Neither lust after them. See, if your fire's been put out, I'm here to bring you some good news. Amen. We got some fire starters. Amen. We got some in the house that's been a burning for years and still a burning and want to set others on fire to. And tonight, you got to be willing to say, Lord, I want to be on fire. Am I on fire? A 
Her life, hey, come on, Father. Come on now. Do, do I think I'm on fire? There's some people that think they're on fire. But honey, honey, the, the, the rains put them out a long time ago. Amen. And all they do is sit there. You want to know how you know that you, amen, your fire's put out? Because when the preacher preach on you, you get mad. Oh, come on now. You don't know how when your fire's out? When you know you need prayer, you don't get it. You don't know how you know your fire's out? When God deals with you, but you won't listen. You don't know how you know your fire's out? You don't shout like you used to. You don't know when you know your fire's out? You ain't talked in tongues in a long time. You don't know when your fire's out? You ain't getting no real new revelation to the scripture. You don't know when your fire's out? You ain't got a desire to be in church anymore. You don't know how you know your fire's out? You don't care about the church anymore. You don't know how you know your fire's out. Amen. God's trying to show you it's time to get back on time. Amen. Amen. Woo! We all, I, I believe we've all agreed tonight we all need to be amen and sit on fire. Have a little more fire. Amen. You can't get too much fire. Amen. You can't get too much fire. Amen. The only way you get too much far is if it's wild far. Amen. If it's strange far. Amen. And then what kind of far is that? That's the far of the devil. Amen. An imposter, a fake far. Amen. The one that will give a courtesy fall. And that it ain't no Holy Ghost in it. Oh, come on now. The one that will talk tongue. Amen. But they speak it from the mind and not from the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't know about a fake far. Amen. A fake far will shout hoot and holler, but there's nothing in it. But I'm telling you, there's a real far tonight. And God is wanting to prove it, show it, and reveal it. So I many of us tonight said, Lord, I need to sit on far. I need to sit on fire. Oh, listen. Some of you, amen. God trying to get your attention. Amen. You know how he'll get your attention? Amen. He'll set your barley fields on fire. Oh, yes. Amen. But see, this is a different kind of fire. This is a fire that destroys your life. Destroys the things that you've got. Amen. God trying to get a hold of you and trying to shake your life to wake you up. Some of you, God's trying to get your attention tonight. And you keep saying, why is things not working out? I've been praying, but God's not been answering. Amen. God's trying to get you on fire. Oh, I believe I stepped on a few toes there. Are we better go? Amen. Let's see tonight. Every one of us can say we need more fire. Amen. I need some more fire. So tonight, if we don't have a shout down, I'm going to call you all a bunch of liars. You hear me? Amen. Because tonight, I feel, I mean, I feel the Holy Ghost. God's wanting to do something in this house tonight. Amen. He's wanting to steer some things up. He's wanting to bring some renewal in the house. He's wanting to bring healing in the house. He's wanting to do some setting free tonight. But tonight, amen, you only get caught afar if you get in the far. Amen. amen. So tonight, here in just a little bit, amen, we're going to ask Sister Laverne, Brother Wimble, and Brother Arnold and his wife, Amen. That when service gets took off here, Amen. They're gonna get the oil, Amen. And we're gonna have prior line tonight, and, and we're gonna have a fire service. You hear me? Amen. We're gonna have what? I, I'm, I'm telling you now, we're gonna have a fire service. What do you mean a fire service? Amen. The Bible said that we could call down fire from heaven. Amen. That some of us tonight that want a little closer walk, amen, want to be reset back on fire, want God to move again. Amen. I believe tonight is the night that God's going to move if you walk in faith. For the just shall live by faith. If you believe God tonight, honey, I'm telling you, He's going to pour down the fire of the Holy Ghost. So tonight, Amen. Oh, yeah, I know. Normally we do congregation songs. We're not doing that right now. Amen. But tonight, before we get into the service, amen, before we pray, is there anyone tonight got a prayer request?